Okay, lads, absolute pleasure to have you with me today. Um, thanks a million for coming on and really, really excited to try the new Symbio beer. So um, before we kick off, why don't you just say a quick hello and introduce yourselves? How are you all doing? I'm Liam Hanlon, um, head brewer and co-founder of St. Mel's Brewing Company. I'm Owen Tynan, uh, co-founder as well with Liam of St. Mel's Brewing Company. And uh, we're here this evening with, with Brian to taste this fantastic little beer that we've developed. Okay, great stuff. Cheers, lads. Um, so for our audience, I suppose, why don't you give it a quick quick introduction to St. Mel's and tell us what you've been up to for the past year or so. Go on. Okay. Uh, so the past year has been very difficult for everybody, obviously, with COVID. Uh, we kind of... From March last year, March, April, it was it was a very iffy time for everybody in the industry. Um, then we got a, got our act together and we've done a lot of different things in the last while. So we have done a re well, it's a brand redesign, uh, as you might see from the logo. I don't know if uh, if Brian can stand up and, and model the t-shirt. That's that's there you go, yeah, absolutely is. fantastic. And um, so yeah, we're um Various with the time we had, especially, and uh, you know, there was a bit of um, kind of restart grants and those sort of government supports. We were able to do uh, the redesign of the brand, we were able to do um, with that brand, then develop the website and online store. And we also got an off license, the breweries and retailers off license, and I put that on the, um, on the building itself. So that allows us to have a, a, a shop on site. So people can drop in or buy online or click and collect. And even during COVID, now we're still open, but <clears throat> we don't mind um, if people ring us and they want to come out, we just call us and we'll drop a book case of beer into the booth kind of thing. You know, we don't even have to come in the door. So, you know, the, we're getting great support from the, the local public uh, off the back of that, which is, which is great. Nice one. Great to hear. So um, I suppose we're here basically to try the, the Symbio beer. Project number one. So we can see that uh, the Belgian yes. style. Let's all hold it up. Let's all hold it up because it's got the new it's logo on it. This is <laughs> hold up that new logo. That's professional <laughs> logo design right there. Thanks there very is. much to the hard working yeah. men of uh, Brand New Creative. Brand right? New Creative. <laughs> very good at what they do. Um, yeah, it's in bio beer. That, okay. it's, it's, been a, it's been a six month project so far. It's, it's a 12 month project overall. Um. Yeah. We've taken bread from a local bakery called Penelto Foods, who are just across the road from us, and who we know we know quite well. Um, and we've put that into our beer, and we've done it uh, with a company called Irish Manufacturing Research on board, and we've done it with funding from the EPA. So we have some very fine minds, finer than my mind could ever be, helping us with this project. Um, and the reason it's called Symbio beer is because it's about industrial symbiosis. So that means industrial companies taking taking waste or surplus produce and rubbish from each other and using it as a raw material to make something good. So the, the surplus bread from Penelto's lines can in theory be used as a starch source to to make bread and that's that, that that was the original hypothesis behind it and so for the last six months we've been playing around with that um and uh, this is the culmination of six months of work so yeah and it's it's a very exciting beer it's the first time i've brewed a belgian style golden ale <laughs> Ever, I never did one on a homebrew scale, and I certainly never did one on a commercial scale. So that was the other exciting part of it. Uh, yeah, we're kind of proud of the results. I think, or I am, anyway. I am. I'm very proud of you too. Say so you're very proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still haven't actually tried this beer, so uh, I think it's time to crack it open. Oh, and you need to crack yes, it too. I do. I'm very yeah. thirsty. <laughs> so okay, yeah. right. Yes, more body that. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, it smells like oh quite the bouquet. The thing with this beer that, that, that uh, like set aside the bread for a minute. This is an eight point one percent beer. We the, the strongest beer we ever brewed before this uh, and released to the public was six and a half percent. 
So the other thing I wanted to do, and this beer gave us the opportunity, was to push our equipment to the max and see how strong I could make beer. Um, and I'm happy to report I could make it a little bit stronger than that. But, but uh, to make it commercially acceptable and commercially viable beer at that level, is it's, it's uh, nice to know we can do that on, on the equipment we have because we, we, we don't have the fanciest brewing kit in the world. So, yeah, it was a long brew day, though. It was. It's a very messy brew there, but uh, like Liam was mainly the, the lead on this project, working with the, the other parties involved. But um, purely from a connoisseur's point of view, I do drink quite a few uh, larger, bigger uh, Belgian beers and that kind of stuff. And it stands up uh, quality-wise. So less chat and more drinking. Cheers, lads. <laughs> yeah, cheers. cheers. Take care. And um, yeah. The thing with a beer at that level as well is that you're, you're really... A lot, of, a lot of the body is coming from the alcohol instead of the malt. So you have to be a little bit careful about, about how much malt goes into the brew because otherwise it turns into a big, gluey, sticky mess, which is fine for an imperial stout at that sort of at that sort of ABV. But for, for a golden ale where you actually have quite a low um, bitterness, I think the bitterness in that is about 40 IBUs. So that's quite low considering the alcohol. So you have to be a little bit careful about the the heaviness of the body because a lot of that a lot of that body is coming from the alcohol rather than the malt. So that was the trick. That was a challenge for me anyway. Also, the fact that bread is very difficult to brew with at any at a at any high concentration. That was yeah, we, should, we should give a, a shout to the uh, the lads in Chip. Uh, was this? Jagask, yeah. Jagask in, in, in Dublin. They built this um, out with, with some with some more scientific work as well. So we had we had Chagask, IMR, and Penalto helping us out on this. And, and the EPA as well. And the EPA ultimately yeah. the back who were were crucial to the whole thing and continue to be. Yeah, well, as I said, this is my first taste. But now it's absolutely gorgeous. Like I'm 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 loving it to be honest. Um, beautiful, beautiful beer. Um, a, a Belgian style golden golden ale, Liam, especially kind of a higher strength one. What sort of, um, I suppose, aromas and flavors should we should we be getting out of the beer? Yeah, it's it's. Well, hold on, hold on a second. I think uh, Brian is a uh, first timer. Should tell us what he's getting out of it before. <laughs> yeah, Liam goes <laughs> and tells us what should be tasting. You you put right. me on the spot. What are you getting there? When I smell it, I actually I don't know. I'm getting a bit of kind of that that bubble gummy kind of nearly clovey yeah. smell from like a from a, a more of a wheat beer um, yeah. style. Um, that's what I'm getting on the nose instantly, and, and kind of that initial yeah. taste as well. Nearly like um, I, I I'm nearly I'm probably biased because I know that bread has got into it, but I even think of that kind of nearly the banana bready kind of taste from it. Yeah. yeah, the whole idea of this beer and the reason I wanted to do something like a Belgian style um, is I wanted something where most of the flavors came from the yeast. Uh, and there aren't many of those styles um, that are massively popular. So you you don't you, where the yeast is doing all the work, and a Belgian style golden ale is one of those styles where the yeast does a huge amount of the heavy lift in terms of flavour, and that's what you're getting now. That's the esters, that clovey flavour. That's all down to the fermentation temperature and the yeast, that, the strain of yeast that's used, which was. Um, which was a Belgian strain we got from. Uh, it was a dried strain, and the name of it just it, it escapes me. But it was it, it, it's a commonly commercially available dried dried strain of Belgian yeast. But that, that I wanted to make sure we could get those flavors to come true because yeast yeast um, flavors are are the ones that go first when there's off flavors in the beer. So I wanted to, I wanted to be able to show that the bread has, was having no impact on this beer. Um, and therefore, when you said to me that you're getting the bubble gum and the banana and the esters and the cloves, that to me means that beer is, is highly successful because that's all coming from the yeast and the fermentations. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, no, that's good to hear. I, I, I'm delighted about that too. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm delighted we didn't even set this up beforehand. Yeah, we, we could have edited it out <laughs> anyway. So, you know. <laughs> that's, that's actually um, amazing. Delighted. <laughs> And the, the, the other thing about this beer is, like, it's a very simple mash. Like, it's a really, I can't remember what's in it, but it's it, it's not, it's not complicated. 
you're not asking for a whole lot except to give the some sugar to the yeast and let the let the yeast do all the all the work. Um and then there's some Styrian golden hops in it as the late addition. Uh I think we I think we used like Magnum, something something fairly basic for the bitterness, but the bitterness isn't high considering the alcohol, the bitterness is just 40 IBUs or something like that. So it's all it's the whole thing is built uh as a platform for the yeast to do the talking and I, I'm pretty happy that the yeast yeah. I yeah. find that like the bit of heat from the extra alcohol that you get anyway is kind of brought forward with the yeast as well, like that kind of spicy. Yeah, there's a lovely warming feeling yeah. in your stomach when you're drinking it. That, yeah. You know, anybody anybody I drank it with immediately they've gone, Oh, that's Ooh. really nice. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and I'm gonna ask you, um, I suppose that the whole project, like like why why would you go about doing this like wh- why would you make uh, beer from bread well <laughs> like the key part of it is the sustainability aspect um you know adding value to the surplus bread from the bakery and uh, get value for ourselves and then that byproducts will come back for, for the bread that they're developing so that's that closed circle sustainability project that that's what interested us in originally uh, I, I was approached by a neighbour actually who works for IMR. Um, that's that's what Peter interest. Uh, so that was the, the why. And then, like Liam loves the project. He loves this stuff. You know, this is this is his baby. So, like um, when you put something like that, a new thing in front of him, he he just wanted to run off with it and, and just and go for it. Like we've made an absolutely fantastic beer out of that. And uh, you know, as he was saying there. There's, there's potential for more. So, you know, the why was the sustainability aspect because it's more part of kind of the values of the company. And then there was the, the fact that Liam got his, his, his chance to go and do some, do some research and experimentation. And that has now given us a platform to go and develop more beers with, which is, you know, it's fantastic. So, like, it's, it's a learning thing. It's what we're all about, so. Yeah, that's that's why we do these things. Yeah, why we're there. Okay, nice. Um, tell us how does the the bread factor into the to the making of this beer? Then how does it how is it different from um, let's say you brewed this beer without bread? How how, how does yeah. it differ? So bread bread is is a replacement form of starch basically. Um, starch is what the brewer uses. From the from the grain, so when, when we get when we get barley, what we're really after and where the money is in the starch. But barley also gives us enzymes to break down that starch. Bread doesn't give you those enzymes, so therefore you're limited in how much bread you can use. Because well, certainly in 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 a brewery with our ethos, where everything has to be done naturally, we only use natural enzymes. We don't bring in. Industrial, industrially produced enzymes are limited in how much bread you can use in your mass. So we we did we did uh, it was originally supposed to be eight pilot brews, but we ended up doing ten, where we where we tried to learn about the limitations in terms of how much bread you can use, what what level the bread needs to be dry to, um, what, what what different types of bread do to the flavor, and that was an eye opener. Um, but the main learning was you can't go past 30% at all because you just don't have enough enzyme in your mash. Um, you need more sophisticated mashing equipment than we have. We have very basic infusion mash. So you need more sophisticated equipment to that than that to go to 30%. So we, we, we got to 15% on our infusion mash. Um, so 15% of it. That, that, that means that we use 15% less malt barley. It's much more expensive, and there's an, that, that's the economic basis of the whole thing. Um, but that bread has to be dried before you use it, so it'll take up the moisture so that you can get the enzyme into the starch. But the other thing that the bread gives you is a lot of gluten. Um, and in an infusion mash, that creates challenges in terms of getting getting the water through the mash and getting the extract out of it, which is what we, that was the hard lesson we learned on through that. Because on a, on a pilot scale, it didn't make that much of a difference, but on the 
on the commercial scale, it made things very difficult. So, gluten, gluten is 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 the uh, if you don't if you don't if you don't activate the glutenase enzymes in the mash and don't break that down, it turns into a kind of cut that binds up the mash and makes makes it into a kind of a cement. So we have photographs of that cement. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want cement in your mash, Tom. No, <laughs> fun to spy, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was um, that was the learning, but we kind of expected it. We didn't expect it to be a fun day, to be honest, and it wasn't. But we 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 have a handle now on what equipment we would need to to invest in in order to start using bread in all of our beers on an ongoing basis. And we're not surprised that we would need to do that. We kind of expect it. So we just okay. proven we just proven that to ourselves, really. You know? Yeah. I don't. I, yeah. I, I don't think anybody with any knowledge of mashing technology would be surprised with the results of our findings when you throw a lot of beer into an infusion mash. <laughs> 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 it's no crack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the other exciting thing with the bread was the the flavor the flavor component of it. Like the we used a purposely we used a, a white ciabatta. Uh, from the bakery because we we experimented with a couple of different breads and uh, different breads have different impacts on flavor of beer if you use them so we're looking at that now and we're we're starting to wonder what unique what unique products we can create with the unique breads that come out of Penelto Bakery so we 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 we'll, we call that originally that was just going to be called Symbio Beer. And then we call it Symbio Bear Project Number One because we do expect to play around a little bit with that. I think there's 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 serious opportunities to create interesting flavors uh, by mixing bread with with traditional mashes. Yeah. So so the bread going into this beer then is that bread that's about to be thrown out or is it is it is it going stale or where does the bread come from? No, a few people have asked me about this, and I have had a few, few uh, fellas written me about moldy bread and stuff like that. But no, it's 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 fresh bread. Um, Liam knows more about the particulars of the project, but <clears throat> it's uh, it's uh, fresh dough that's that's put through the system um, because it's such a large system that they need to heat up the ovens and heat the system up, and then they need to change over products and. At, at either end to book ends the main runs that have this extra extra surplus bread there. Um, and it comes into us fully formed and launched. Um, and it's and fresh, you can use it there and out of the box. It's, it's fine. But Liam maybe knows a little bit more about the Yeah, well look, it's such they they're uh, they're um, they're operating 24-7 with three three bread lines. So the bread we get from them uh is bread that is used to heat up the oven, or it's used it's used to change over bread types. So the, the the dough needs to go through the machine. They need to keep the dough moving through the machine. Um. So when they're finished one product product, they would use dough to change temperatures and stuff like that. And that's the sort of bread we're taking off them. That all went out to waste before before we we started talking to them. Um. And had zero value for the bakery. Now now. Potentially, uh, it will have value for the bakery and value for us. All that bread, so it, it it's a very positive thing for the local local environment and the local economy. Okay, amazing. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. As I said earlier on, everyone wins basically value creation all around the chain. Um, yeah, which yeah. is fantastic to hear. Um, I I I'll, I'll go straight forward. Where can you get the beer? Where is it available? All good off licenses as, <laughs> as soon as the seed is been here, surely. Uh, but look, with, with COVID, we haven't been around as much in the government office and the speciality places as, uh, as much. Um, but it's available in all the local offices um, and online at the shop and in the shop. And so www.saintnowsbrewing.com. Uh, I'm sure we'll post a link along with the video. Forward slash shop. Forward slash shop. But you can also just go onto the website and click the shop link. Or do that. Or do that. That's great. If, if you're technically minded. <laughs> you, you can also, if you're local or if you're, well, if you if you happen to be passing Longford or if you're local at some point, you can just walk into the shop 
and buy beer off us because yeah. we have a producer's retail license. So you can literally walk into our brewery, thanks to Alan Kelly, and buy a bottle or a can of beer and go again. Yeah. You don't have to buy a case. You don't have to buy several cases. Um, and uh, that's pretty unique. And I, I, it's great. We love when people come in to call into us to buy beer. We love having a chat with them, and uh, it's just it's just great to have a brewery shop. So if you are in Longford, or if you're passing Longford, please do call in and have a chat. We are about sixty seconds off the main M4 Sligo Westport Road, so you could just nip in, grab a bottle, and nip out. Yeah. And if I come out and there's sweat on me, and I'm wearing green wellies, uh probably means that I'm really busy, so <laughs> I send no one out. <laughs> um, otherwise, otherwise, do call in. We, and we're, yes. open from, we're open from 10 to 6, and we're open at 6.30 on a Friday. We're, we're going to extend those hours due to demand, and we're going to start opening on a Saturday very soon. Watch your social media for announcements on that. Nice, nice. Speaking of social media, earlier on I did uh, put out a tweet saying we'd be we'd be chatting this evening and tasting the beer. Uh, we'll jump to them now in a sec. Um, but before we do, I, I just genuinely want to say, first tasting the beer, it's an absolutely fantastic, phenomenal beer. And I say that without an asterisk at the end of it by by saying you know you're you're using it's amazing because you're using some bread in it or it's more sustainable. If I didn't know that, I'd still think it's unbelievable. Like as a as a I don't know, as as a standalone beer, I suppose. Um, so so fair play to you, absolutely fantastic. Cheers, so, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Fair play, Cheers. man. Fair play. And it's uh, it's in a nice format, I think, as well. The seventy five. It's a, it's a sipping beer because it's quite strong. You know, you're not drinking pints of it. Just uh, touch a class there with the with the stopper. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's for sharing, so you can buy a bottle of it, or buy two, and. Half half filled glass, you know? half filled glass. Yeah. Or just use a smaller glass. Like. No, half filled or smaller glass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right, I'll jump to a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is from Al Nolan, uh, who asks, what's your favourite beer style to brew? I, I'll direct that at you, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> um, favourite beer style to brew? I don't... Um, that's a really difficult question to answer. I don't think I have one. I think that um, uh, when I mash it in, it's a 4% lager. <laughs> that's it's, very handy. Yeah, it does, it's very handy. Um, <laughs> when I'm sampling first words, it's a stout because I get to taste... I. When I do darker beers, I tend to drink like a half a glass of the first wort. It's it's the greatest pick me up you can have. I used to call it the brewer's breakfast. Uh, so, well, at that stage, I wish I, I always want to be brewing a stout because the first wort from a stout cannot be matched by any other first wort, which nobody it isn't relevant to anybody, but it's relevant to me. First wort problems. Uh, and when then when I'm when I'm further downstream, if I'm filtering the beer, I want it to be a lager again because that's easy to filter. But if 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 I'm if I'm dry hopping, I want it to be something mental. I want it to be, I will yeah, or we're throwing in fifteen kilos of hops into a fifteen hectoliter brew, or I want it to be uh you know something like that. Okay, um, so second question in from Peter Breen was that. If you don't have to worry about market appeal, profit, anything else like that, what would you like to brew just because you wanted to? I think I'll oh. feel this one. Um, it's personally, you're really talking about what you want to drink. So, like, I, I, I kind of live out in the countryside here, and I'm, and if I'm not in the brewery or with the kids outside or, you know, chopping down bushes or something. So, I tend to be working out physically a lot, and the lager is. Is really a cold lager. I keep like a lot of um, pint glasses in the freezer in the summer, you know. So, one of our hell is lager out of a bottle straight into a chilled glass after doing a bit of work outside. Absolutely fantastic. So, like those beers, I think, you know, the hell is a world class beer. And really, I'd be that'd be the style of beer that I'd be, I'd be into. 
just be purely just from drinking it. Plus, you know, you can drink quite a few and you're, you're grand. It's got that kind of uh, quality to it that, you know, you can get up the next day and go again, not a bother on it. You know, that's, 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 that's for me, you know? We've never worried about market ability. <laughs> <We've> never. <laughs> We've <laughs> never made a profit, so... Uh, well, we did in the first year, but we weren't paying ourselves away. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. But um, I don't think... Uh, I suppose market appeal does come into it to a certain extent. But um, I don't think either of those two things has ever stopped me brewing a beer, unfortunately. Maybe they should. But I, you know, it, you, you you can't worry about profit when you do worry about it, and you need to make it. Um, but there's no there's no beer we decided to brew that was driven by those two factors. I don't think. Okay, so our final question in then from Simon Broderick was, "What's the next Symbio beer going to be?" Ooh, excellent question. I'm glad you asked that, Simon. Yes, excellent. Uh, it's, I, I, I'll take yeah. that one on. If you don't I know, yeah, no, fair enough. No, I, I, like, this yeah. is a debate that we need to have ourselves. But, um, yeah, we haven't actually fully explored the possibilities. But what, I, I, I talked before about the fact that we've discovered that different breads can have different impacts on the flavour of the beer. And we'll probably explore that with our next bio beer. But uh, Simon will be the first to know. After all, I'm Penelope. Yes, so lads, absolute pleasure having you on as always. Always good to have the crack, have the chats. Super, super beer. Um, highly recommend anyone to go out and if you haven't tried it, go go get a bottle. Lovely stuff. Um, pleasure, yeah. So cheers, lads. Thanks cheers, very much, Brian. Brian. Thanks very much, everybody. We hope to see you in our brewery shop or at least online. And um, thanks very much, everybody, for your support. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks very much, Brian. And more power to the crack beer community and, and all that you're doing for the for the industry in general because we want to see this type of thing taking off and it has done over the last four or five years um, and it's just getting stronger and stronger. So, cheers. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian.